someone told that like uh, you have two years gap after intermediate right yes sir yes sir hey, before starting you know uh, good evening everyone for the recording purpose uh, so we are uh, so uh, in the third demo session actually like we had to skip yesterday's session i had to skip yesterday's session because of some you know unforeseen issue with my laptop so this is our third demo session for performance testing training uh, someone asked like uh, uh they have career gap uh, after intermediate they have two years gap right yes sir for your information i have four years of gap between my graduation and mca okay i can show my certificates as well so if you meet in person i'll show my certificates as well ha, ha, not, have... not like that sir but you have uh... no 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 let me complete so it that's not a big deal actually if you have two years gap after intermediate that's not a big deal okay, okay. So yeah. I have four years gap between my graduation and MCA. I did mm -hmm. my MCA actually. Okay. Yes, so between sir. graduation and MCA, I have four years gap. And also one more thing I would. Uh, so did I answer your question? Yes, yes, sir. I got my answer. That's not an issue. Yeah. So yeah. you know, like uh, see, after doing my MCA, when I came to Hyderabad in job search, right? So one of my I spoke with one of my cousins. So he told that I know, like uh, he was working in one of the MNC at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, Vipro, Vipro. He was working in Vipro to be precise. Okay. Yes, so when sir. I asked him like to show some placement, right? So first question he asked me is, how did you know um, when you have four years of gap between your graduation and MCA? Yes, right? So how did you think that companies will companies will accept that, right? Yes. This is the question that I was faced. You know, I literally got shocked. Uh, like, uh, you know, uh, all my dreams got uh, shattered on hearing that. Yes, yes. Sir. yes. So the same gap, whatever gap I have. So I learned Java, right? And uh, mm -hmm. at that time, Java is in very much demand. I learned Java, and I, you know, for six months, I learned Java for six months. Poor Java, advanced Java, right? Yes, yes and, sir. Uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And I got a job with three and a half years experience, claimed experience. Okay. Okay. Yes, so sir. my my story or my experience itself, you know, is a uh, big example for those who are having career gap. Okay. And in the past two years, I have shown you know, many. I have seen many people and many people join my training and you know, those who are have those who are twenty ten pass outs, two thousand eight pass outs, two thousand twelve pass outs. They got job by claiming five years of experience also. Okay. Okay. I yes, can sir. share you. I can share you there. I can show you their certificates and you know their offer letters also if you meet in person. I cannot share those online. Yes, yes. I understood, sir. If you meet in person, I can share their certificates, which year pass out they are, and you know how many years they have claimed experience and when did they join my training. I'll show you the whole WhatsApp chat conversation. Okay. All you need is like you should be ambitious and you should be come. Uh, you know, uh, you should have that commitment and the dedication, passion to get a job. Okay. And yeah. one more thing I want to discuss is I hear that you know many people ask me like uh, uh, when they when they call me for inquiry, right? So they they ask me like you know do you provide proxy? No, I don't provide proxy guys. Okay. Before you. You are paying the fee only. I'm telling that. Okay, I don't want to get students by saying that I will help them in interviews. No, I won't encourage proxy or I won't do proxy. Though you know, if you have any such plans, this is not the right place. If you want to learn subject and you know, if you want to track interviews on your own, then only you know, continue in this training. Clear, guys? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. So, yes, clear. Yeah, so I have, you know, like 80 to 90 percent of my students cracked interviews on their own, not just one interview. There are people who cracked five interviews. I can show you their offer letters as well. One of my previous batch student, February 2022 batch student, he, you know, his name is Khalil from Mechanical 2018 passed out. He was Mechanical 2018 passed out. Like he got like, he cracked interviews of five companies, five different companies. And got four offer letters out of them. I have many such examples. I have I can show you their offer letters as well as I can show you like you know when they joined the training and what is the hard work they have kept and all this. Understood, guys? Yes. So please, you know, 
and also performance testing you don't require you know like uh, to, to you don't need to waste uh, money for getting proxy okay it's easy to learn and easy to enter there is le very less competition in performance testing but you should work hard for at least 2 to 3 months and you will be able to crack interviews on your own don't go for those you know don't go for those stupid things clear guys yes clear sir. clear yes sir. so yes, sir. many students and many trainers are cheating you and also students are also lazy to learn and you know they are not having that passion and commitment or they don't have that self some people don't have confidence on themselves some people due to lack of guidance right they are getting cheated right so if someone go join a job through proxy right they will be removed in they will be terminated in 3 to 4 months and again they have to pay money and one more one, one lakh more or two lakhs more and to, again they have to depend on proxy even though they are able to get job right they have to pay like they have to get job support and they have to pay at least 25 to 30000 per monthly job support understand that half of your salary will go to, towards the job support thing if you go through proxy and you know you upfront you have to pay and some 1 lakh or 2 lakhs for proxy don't go for that uh, such those mal practices so someone dropped maybe you know like they don't want to go through <laughs> or maybe it's an internet connection issue okay let's see if they join back we will see clear guys yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir And I can show you like, you know, students who joined my training, right? So February, February 2022 batch and uh, March 2022 batch, they already got selected and they, are, they already got, you know, joined job, right? Some of my students who joined, uh, who joined the training in 2020, they already got placement and they switched the company also. They joined the second company with very good, more than 100% high, right? So if you are, you know, like if you are willing to learn and if you are, uh, willing to crack interviews on your own only this is the right place guys clear guys yes sir. and moreover one more thing i want to tell you so we are providing referral openings uh, I'll, i want to show you like some you know hold on so i'm sharing my screen i think i have shown you previously but quickly let me show once again because we have some new participants right so there are few startup companies who are taking uh, trained guys knowingly so if you observe here i have masked the company name and the person name okay so if you see this uh, uh, chart conversation right you can read it here right is there any fake experience guy who can clear entry on jmeter right if he got he or she can clear it we can hire as a full time employee clear guys so now any question guys you should get some question why they are asking fake experience guy right yes because uh, someone who is having genuine experience or you know like uh, they are getting 10 to 15 lakhs package for three years experience that those are the packages that mncs are offering offering for three years experience nowadays from the past one year right now these are startup there are certain startup companies and there are some mncs also who cannot afford that much package right that much package of 10 to 15 lakhs so they are taking exp uh, trained guys and they are offering like 6 to 8 lakhs package. Clear guys? The yes. average package my student got, uh, my students got in MNC is 10 lakhs. Now, instead of, you know, like instead of, uh, uh, now what, now what is the benefit that you get if you go to join these companies, right? So you need not worry about BGC background check. You need not worry about that high expectations because they are already taking, taking you knowingly. They know that you are trained uh, person, right? And who is joining with fake experience? Yes or no? Right. Yes, so sir. trust yes. me, like your li your life will be very cool, okay? Because you don't you need not worry about BGC. Those companies won't conduct BGC because they know that you you know like uh, there are some people uh, who are joining with training only, right? And you will not you need not worry about the high expectations that you know companies will have for three plus or four plus or five plus experience guys those who are keeping experience claiming fake experience yes or no guys and you need not spend money for you know like uh, these uh, stupid proxy things and uh, backdoor proxy support and all this yes 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 or no 
yes, yes. you know they will charge yes, that charge like yes, one lakh two lakhs amount right you need not pay the tax right? so if you join such you are able to crack interviews right so and moreover interviews also it will be easy to crack these interviews understood guys because they are knowingly that they know that you are a trained person and you you don't have any experience isn't it so yes, interviews yes. also will be relatively easier okay so there are a lot of such uh, you know and uh, let me show you i told you right so some uh, i can show you some offer letters which are masked so this guy is from mechanical background mechanical 2018 pass out so he got selected for cognizant and uh, this one is from you know this guy like he is 2008 pass out electronics from electronics and instrumentation engineering this guy i can show you share you you know his certificate and uh, his contact details also so if you meet me in person okay and he recently got selected for tcs 2008 uh, ei electronics and instrumentation engineering passed out uh, you remember like i ask everyone when you call for an enquiry i will uh, you know i ask everyone what is your qualification and i note it down actually i save save those details here you can see right so you uh, i'll show you previous batch students okay just for your information for reference so if you let me know your qualification and all those details right so it will help me like uh, to give you referrals or you know uh, giving sending the right person to the right place understood guys yes yes, yes. yeah understood so understood the yes, survey understood okay so let's start the session then okay uh, one second so this is how you can reach my channel guys go to youtube and search for software performance session real time training and uh, you will see you know my channel with this logo right you see this performance testing logo where we have different types of performance testing right so this shows you different types of performance testing this logo and uh, also uh, for your information like we are having i am conducting the uh, classroom training on sundays where i am giving you know a training on live projects uh, that is on in hyderabad only those who are you know uh, those who are available in hyderabad and those who can attend that so please call me for more details recording so in the last session i completed i i covered some computer basics right that every software engineer should know not only the performance test engineer but every you know every software engineer should know these computer fundamentals computer basics right which i covered you know there may be few more there will be lot more also right but whatever i you know i i can recollect and all i have covered all this right now i also asked you to go through the excel basics training and word basics training so how many of you worked on that yes am i audible yes sir yes sir yes sir many of you yes, went through the excel basics training and word basics training i have gone through it okay jagdish anyone else I am also Chaitanya. Chaitanya, okay, okay. Please complete as soon as possible because once we start the tool, right, you will be having scripting assignments. So you will not get time. You cannot go back here and you know you cannot. Uh, you may not be able to spend time on this. So please complete this Excel basic training and Word basic training. Those who joined from today, okay. So let me quickly show you. Let me go through the training. Uh, your voice is breaking someone is speaking but their voice is breaking so once you launch once you go to word right once you launch word right so go go to help and uh, there is an option called show training click on that show training and you will have short videos like this right all these are short videos uh, training videos how to create a document in word how to save your document to one drive how to collaborate in word and all this in the same way in excel also you have excel basics training can you please check whether you have this uh, option or not i came to know that side like someone who is uh, having using you know uh, what we call this pirated version they will not be able to see this right 
so if you go to show training right so in excel also you have some quick videos on how to start an excel what is row what is column how to create a workbook and all this please go through this guys so word and excel are important for every software engineer every software engineer okay everyone in it for that matter uh, so if some some people may be working in non non you know non uh, technical side like hr department and all this they also use this excel and word right so everyone should be should know at least basics of this word and excel so for that please go through if you haven't have any knowledge please go through these trainings these basic trainings okay so the tabs and i didn't get in so what i can do so if you are using you know like if you are not using a licensed version then uh, i i think like uh, it will not show that option so training so those who are not having that option so please you know search in youtube you have a lot of videos on excel and word okay sir yes, basics we YouTube basics maximum we, got, we know because we are working na so basics maximum we know I think so this is for those who don't know this those who are from non it background and those who don't know these excel and word basics okay okay not for everyone okay now let me start with you know i also covered some windows shortcuts which everyone should know and start using this now for today's session let me start with software development life cycle okay so whenever any project or whenever any software project is uh, Uh, being developed right so it typically follows this software development life cycle this is not an exact uh, life cycle guys by the way this is a typical life cycle okay or a model life cycle of a so any software project so once uh, you know someone is uh, an, an organization or a team of engineers software engineers are developing a project so first they will collect the requirements and they will analyze the requirements so what are the requirements what are the requirements of that project of that application right and they will collect the requirements and they will collect the, they will analyze those requirements okay there will be some brs document business requirement specification document and uh, there will you know like i will not go into those terminology so they will collect the requirements and they will analyze the requirement and the architect team there will be an architect for any project involved so the architect will design the application so what so what goes into design phase is they will determine on like which programming language to use uh, and all this what is the architecture of the application and all this right that goes in that uh, that falls into design phase once the designing of the application is completed right so next comes implementation phase implementation phase means nothing but developers will start writing the code for that Im by implementing that design whatever design is decided in the designing phase by the architects right they will developers will start writing code for that right that is implementation phase and uh, while this software is being developed right so testing also will come into picture right so of course in software in this diagram right it is showing that testing will come after implementation but ideally nowadays testing will start as along with the development most of the projects right so the testing activities will be done uh, will be started along with the development okay so we'll discuss like why why what is the purpose of you know starting test, testing doing that is called as early testing that's called as early testing okay so what is the purpose of doing that early testing or else you know it is also called as shift left approach so what is that shift left approach what what is the necessity of testing the application along with the development and all we we'll discuss later right so once you know like so implementation phase means the phase in which the software is being coded or developers start writing the code and uh, developing the project that is implementation phase testing phase is where that software is tested uh, and there are different types of testing so which we will discuss soon so once testing is completed it will go into production that is called evaluation phase so this is a typical software development life cycle clear guys yes sir Yes, yes, yes. So once it yes, once sir. the application developed and tested, right, it will go into production. So that is evaluation phase. So this is it. Uh, so as I said, you know, this is a this is just an example, guys. So you know, uh, nowadays like testing is also done along with development. There will be some changes here and there, right? But this is it. Now we are interested, you know, like we are not interested in this requirement analysis, designing and development of the application, right? We are interested in this testing phase, right? So let now let's see. Let's understand. 
what are the different types of testing and uh, what are the different types of testing right first let's understand that so before moving to that right so this is my favorite quote about testing so to tell somebody that they are wrong is called as criticism and to do so officially is called as testing to do so officially while being paid for that that is called testing right agree with me yes sir agree yes sir right now let's see what are the different types of testing so and uh, what is the testing life cycle what is the life cycle of uh, the software testing right so before discussing this testing life cycle right so software testing life cycle any product that you buy will be going through a multiple uh, quality checks you should, you may be aware of that right most of you should be aware of that isn't it even if you buy a bike or you know or a car or anything for that matter even if you buy a trouser or a pant also it will go through some quality checks before it is sold you see you know uh, oh, a small sticker saying that okay or tested or something right yes or no yes yes sir. yes so in the same way so software also will be tested right so and there are different types of testing there are different types of testing that a uh, software project will go through okay so the first type of testing will be unit testing which will be done by developers right so in, uh, i'll show you something before go, uh, discussing this software testing life cycle right so even you know like uh, one second any product which is having some good value right so it, it will go through some thorough testing you can see here right so when you know when see this is just a, a testing for durability of that product durability and quality of that product Oh, yes, I'm muting everyone. There is some background noise from few people. So if you have any query, right, please unmute yourself and you know you can ask that. You see here, right? So they're testing that product, right? Before selling that, that they they test the product, they test each model. Understood, guys? So now in the same way, uh, software also will be tested before it goes into production. It will it will be subjected to different types of testing, right? so what are yes. the tests you know what are the different types of testing that so a software application go, goes through is the first type of testing is unit testing and that is done by developers themselves right the first type of testing is unit testing which is done by developers so unit testing what is unit testing <clears throat> let's say for example a group of developers are working on developing a gmail application i'll open a private browser i'll explain why I, i opened a private browser and what is the difference between normal and browser and private browser in a different session okay so let's say for example some group of developers are working on this gmail application okay or else let me show here my mailbox okay so one developer will not be working the whole gmail application yes or no there yes, is a yes. lot of developers oh, will yes. be involved in this some team of developers will be developing the ui part user interface part some team of developer will be developing the back end part right and you know like some people will be working on some team of development some te developer teams may be working on this hangouts part and all this right some people will be working on this inbox part and all this now <coughs> now once a piece of code is written developed by the developer right so developers do some testing called unit testing so unit where unit means a small piece of code okay so you a small piece of code and unit testing is done by developers by developers themselves so it is also called as white box testing we will discuss what is white box and black box uh, in few minutes so for now remember that you know like this white box test, unit testing is called as white box testing and it is done during the development of an application by the developers by the developers right and unit test isolate a section of code and verify its correctness so basically as soon as some piece of code is written the developers do something called unit testing and what is the purpose of unit testing to verify its correctness to verify whether that piece of code is working correctly or not that small piece of code okay so if it is a java application right in java everything is a class so once a class is written or a once a function is once a function or a method is developed right they will first test that piece of code that function or method or java class okay so a, that's what i mentioned here a unit may be an individual function method processor module or an object what is meant by a module 
See, for example, if we go back to this Gmail example, right? So it may be split into different modules. Hangouts is Google Hangouts is one module. Google Meet, Meet will be developed as one module, this Google Meet. Okay. And this inbox may be developed as one module. Understood, guys? What is meant by module? All these modules combined together make your Gmail application. Guys, uh, as there are some non computers, guys, I will be spending more on, you know, like for the first 10 to 15 days on these basics, these fundamentals, guys. Okay. And also, it will be a refresher for those who are, you know, those who are having career gap or those who are from, even from computers background, also, it will be a refresher for them. So, unit may be an individual function, method, procedure, module, or object. You understood what is meant by software module, right? So, function or method means we will discuss that later. What is a function? What is a method? And all. For now, remember that a small piece of code is called as a unit. And that unit, that small piece of code will be tested by the developers, and that is called as unit testing. So, just for now, remember this. Is it clear, guys, everyone? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir, yes. Sir, clear. So once unit testing is completed, right? Next comes integration testing. Now let's understand this integration testing. I'll go with some real time analogy. So let's say, for example, you bought a bike, right? So, and uh, there are thousands of parts in a bike or a car, right? Let's say you buy a buy a uh, you bought a bike or a car, right? There will be thousands of parts in that, right? And uh, so. For example, your handle may be developed by one company, your vehicle seat may be developed by another company, and headlights may be developed by another company, wheels may be developed by another company, gearbox will be developed by some other company, right? So before delivering those products to the uh, your automobile manufacturer, they will individually test that, yes or no? Suppose there is a manufacturer who manufactures headlights for a vehicle. They will test that before selling, they will test the bulb, they will test the headlight, whether it is working or not and all. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Now, yes. once all these components are assembled together, right? Again, you know, like the manufacturer also test that, right? They will test whether all the components are working fine or not. Yes or no? Yes, yes sir. Yes. They have to test it. Once, they are, once, once all the components are assembled, they have to test it again. Isn't it? So, yes. in the same way, once all these uh, different modules are combined together, once all these pieces of code are combined together, right? So another type of testing will be done that is called as integration testing. Okay, integration testing. <coughs> once all these modules are combined together, software modules are combined together, they will be tested you know, in an environment called SIT environment where SIT stands for system integration testing. Okay, and this is, uh, right? So this environment is called as system integration testing. What is meant by environment? Environment means nothing but, you know, some one or two computers, right? On which the application is running. Understood, guys? That's nothing but an environment. So here environment means nothing but a computer on which that uh, application is running, that code is running or the code is deployed. Understood, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Right? So that is called as integration. What is called as integration testing? Integration testing is defined as a type of testing where software modules are integrated logically and tested as a group. Once these different modules are combined together, integrated means combined, combined logically and uh, they are tested as a group that is called as integration testing. And that environment in which the, com the environment is in which the integration testing is done called as is called as system integration testing SIT environment. Clear, guys? Yes, yes, sir. Clear. Yes, sir. Once the once the bike or car is assembled, right, they will do some testing on the test track, right? Yes, yes. So in the same way here, you know, like once these pieces are combined together, right? So they will do this for the software, right? They will do this system integration testing. Okay. Already they are tested by the developers individually. Now, after combining those different modules. <coughs> This <coughs> I'm sorry. This integration testing will be done. Okay. And now integration testing will be done by you know mostly with by uh, testing in this only. There will be separate testing team for this integration testing. In some companies, if it is a small project, developers only will do that integration testing. Developers only may be doing that, may be doing that integration testing. But mostly you know there will be a separate you know, uh, testing team for that to uh, you know right to do this system integration testing. Okay. And a typical software project consists of multiple software modules coded by different programmers. 
as i mentioned in this example right in this gmail example right any typical uh, software project it consists of multiple software modules so here google meet is one module and hangouts may be another module and this inbox may be another module understood guys yes yes so once this integration testing is done right so what is the purpose of that integration testing so it is to expose the defects in the interaction between these software modules when they are integrated means integrated means when they are combined together the purpose of this integration testing is to find out any defects in the interaction right now once this integration testing is done right so functional testing uh, you know like uh, functional testing will come into picture so functional testing will be done in an environment called qa environment right so the same team like you know integration testing team are uh, uh, you know in one way or the other the functional testing team only does this integration testing also in most of in my current project right so uh, they will do uh, they, we have a separate team for integration testing and functional testing okay we have a in, separate uh, team for integration testing and uh, functional testing sometimes like uh, it is a small project right the same testing units will be doing this integration testing and functional testing <coughs> okay depends on case to case now the next type of testing is functional testing which is done in qa environment where qa stands for quality analysis or assurance qa stands for quality analysis or assurance right now what is this functional testing so functional testing is a type of black box testing where the testing is tested against the functional requirements or specifications now let's understand this in detail so and also observe that we we got two new terms white box testing and black box testing those who are already trained or those who are already working in manual testing you know very well what is white box testing and what is black box testing okay so for those who are you know new to it right so let me explain i'll explain this white box and black box testing soon first let me explain what is functional testing right <coughs> so functional testing is a type of testing where the system the system means application the application is tested against the functional requirements or specifications okay now let's understand that what is meant by functional requirements let's say for example i'll take the same gmail example suppose you type gmail.com and you get this page you click on sign in and you get this login page right so now you have to enter either email or phone you have to enter your email address or your mobile number isn't it suppose i am entering my email id like this so this is my email id perfectest.kb@gmail.com now for your information even though i don't enter at @gmail.com it will work right if you click next without entering at the rate @gmail.com also it will work you can see here it automatically appended that gmail.com isn't it because we are on gmail application now 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 we need we are supposed to enter the password it is application is prompting for the password right so if i enter a correct password right it will leave, it will it should let me to log in it should allow me to log in to my inbox right if i enter a valid email address uh, valid password sorry right if i don't enter a valid password right so it should display some error message so that is the requirement of this page right yes or no that is the functional specification or the requirement of this page right this is nothing but you know functional requirements or specifications of that page understood guys yes yes sir yes. yes this is how it should work right if you enter a valid email uh, password valid password it should allow us to log in if i don't enter a valid password it should not allow me to log in and it should display an error message right that is the requirement of this page right now this is the functionality this is how the application is developed and or uh, this is the functionality of this login page right so this testing this functionality of this application is called as functional testing testing the application for the functionality it means functions or features are tested by feeding them input and examining the output what is the input that I have, we are entering here in the first screen we are supposed to enter our email address right and we have to check the what is the output of that page yes or no yes sir yes right? so this, this is how the functionality is this is the functionality of this login page so we are supposed to enter some input and examine the output whether 
it, it is asking for me it is asking for password or not let's say once you enter email address right it should ask for password again once you enter the password right so it has to verify whether it is a valid password or not isn't it if it is a valid password it should allow me to log in otherwise it should display an error message just like how you show you have seen before isn't it now it is allowing for me for login of course i kept a two step verification right but you understood right what is meant by functional testing guys yes understood yes sir there is right so features or functions are tested by feeding them input and examining the output right and functional testing ensures that the software requirements are properly satisfied by the application so functional testing ensures make sure that the software requirements are properly satisfied by the application okay now so this is another type of testing as we discussed right these are the important you know see this is not the complete list by the way apart from this we have security testing penetration testing and there are other types of testing as well okay so um, i covered the important types of testing in a uh, in a typical software testing life cycle right so function apart from this functional testing like another type of testing is performance testing and this is non functional testing by the way right so performance testing is a non functional testing now let's understand what is meant by this non functional testing so we don't test the functionality of the application right? anyways functional testing team will do that right performance what is the main objective of performance testing is to determine an application's speed responsiveness and stability of a computer network software program or a device under a load right so let me explain this you know with some analogy okay <clears throat> let me explain with some analogy suppose you know if if you are uh, uh, again i'll take that way bike example right so you you bought a bike and you know there will be some load bearing capacity of that yes or no so it will you know as per the capacity of the vehicle you will have some load bearing capacity that you know two persons can go or this is the maximum weight you saw any manual of any vehicle guys you might have seen that manual right if not you know please check once so for a, in every manual right there will be some this is the weight capacity of this 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 uh, you know the weight of the capacity of the vehicle is some 120 kg or 150 kg something like that right yes sir no yes sir yes sir now we know if if one person is going on a bike right so he may be riding faster but if two persons may be going you know the the speed of the vehicle may decrease or if three or four persons are riding the vehicle riding a bike right so obviously it will slow down right if it is beyond the capacity isn't it yes sir so the performance testing is non functional testing coming back to this performance testing is non functional testing to determine an application speed right so coming to the uh, coming to the software right so software performance testing right so we do performance testing to determine the speed of an application first thing means suppose you type apple.com okay you go to this apple website so how much time it is taking to load the page right that is speed or response time of the page that is called as speed or response time of the page how many seconds it is taking to load the page right or else if you go to amazon.in how many seconds is it is taking to load or flipkart.com any application so what is the objective of doing performance testing guys to find out an application's speed speed means response time of that application sir the speed will work it depends on the net it depends on the network speed it depends on your uh, machine right the user's machine suppose you have a very old desktop Pent with Pentium processor, obviously it will take more time, isn't it? If you browse websites like this, obviously they those machines may take more time. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, but under okay. ideal ideal conditions, right? What is the response time of that page? How many seconds it is taking under ideal conditions, right? If you have a good network and good uh, machine, what is the response okay. time of the page? And how well it is responding and how stable the application is, right? so yeah. these are the important factors for doing performance testing so performance testing is a non functional testing to determine an application's speed stability scalability and reliability how speed the application is how stable the application is 
and how scalable the application is okay so speed and stability stable you understand right so scalable yeah, scalability means, scalability means how many users can it support let's say for example ircdc has like 35 lakh users per day okay facebook application has 20 million users per day 20 million users there may be like you know 10 million concurrent users uh, during the peak time for facebook application right now how scalable means how many users can it support what is the maximum capacity of the application or what is the maximum user load that it can support that is scalability that is called as scalability and reliability 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 means how reliable is the application means once it goes into production how much reliable the application is or what is the you know how much assurance is there that uh, the application will not break down okay so it discuss those in detail let me go back to the previous one so now let's understand right so you understood right what is the difference between functional and non functional testing guys or functional testing and performance testing yes sir right yes understand performance testing is in, done in an environment called test environment or engineering environment okay so the environment in which are the systems on which this testing will be done the computers on which the this testing will be done is called as engineering environment or test environment okay now let me so this slide speaks about what is the difference between functional and non functional testing okay so functional testing is testing the functionality of the application and if you are testing manually without using any tools that is called as manual testing and if you are using for testing the functionality if you are using any tools like selenium or uft that is called as automation testing okay so many people ask this question what is difference between uh, you know manual testing and automation testing and performance right so this slide helps you to understand or you know so you can understand this right so functional testing of an application without using any tool is called as manual testing and if you are using any tool for doing that functional testing that is called as automation testing right and uh, we have selenium as the most popular open source tool for automation testing and uh, uft there are couple of other tools as well but selenium is so popular and by the way like you know the so again so when it comes to when it comes to our uh, career path right so if you choose automation testing you have to learn some uh, and if you want to uh, pursue a career in uh, automation testing with selenium right so we should be learning like uh, java or some python or uh, c sharp so because we have selenium with java selenium with python and selenium with c sharp right so of course we have some you know like uh, tools which don't have code also nowadays right however like you know if you are using some tools for doing the functional testing that is called as automation testing and if you are doing if you are not using any tools for uh, functional testing that is called as manual testing right now coming back to performance testing performance testing is non functional testing this is functional testing and this is non functional testing right it is defined as a type of software testing to check the non functional aspects what are those non functional aspects guys for the first and foremost one is performance what is the performance of the application security testing also falls under this non functional testing okay usability testing reliability testing all these fall under this non functional testing performance testing is one type of non functional testing understood or no guys yes sir right and yes understood these are the popular tools for performance testing so nowadays so loadrunner is one licensed tool and jmeter is an open source tool so these are the these are the two tools which are having more market share for performance testing please understand that all the security testing usability reliability these also fall under non functional testing okay and performance testing is one type of non functional testing clear guys yes yes sir so i'll yes. stop it here guys for today so we will discuss like performance testing at a high level and uh, in detail in the next session okay so like share subscribe to my youtube channel guys this is for recording purpose and let me do some self marketing self promotion all right so i am uh, and have a nice day please share your comments or feedback in the form of uh, you know please share your feedback in the form of comments on my youtube channel for public videos you can do that only for our public videos of course so please share your feedback guys okay and i'll stop it here for today we'll continue tomorrow have a nice day